The Human Defence System, Part 1, and this is geared towards the Irish Leaving Cert. Immunity is the ability to fight infection, and the human immune response is split into two systems. We have the General Defence System, and then there's the Specific Defence System. The General Defence System is a blanket way of fighting infection. It targets every pathogen in the same way. In contrast, the specific defence system administers a very particular response to foreign antigens and this response is usually antibody production. It is a tailored approach to a particular foreign antigen that's most important. By the way, pathogenic means disease causing like pathogenic bacteria and viruses and antigens, well these are foreign molecules that cause the production of antibodies. Foreign antigens would be those molecules found on the surface of viruses and pathogenic bacteria. Your immune system recognises that these pathogenic bacteria and viruses are bad guys because they have these foreign antigens on their surfaces. So let's talk about the general immune system and we'll start from the outside and work our way in. The first part of the general defence system is your skin. Your skin acts as a physical barrier. This barrier prevents the entry of pathogens. Sebum is an oil that's produced by your sebaceous glands and sebum acts to moisturise your skin and this moisturising effect prevents the skin from cracking so sebum helps to maintain the barrier that the skin acts as. Also note that sebum contains antibacterial chemicals. Also note that your respiratory system is lined with these mucus producing cells and you'll remember that your trachea is covered with these hair like projections called cilia. The mucus traps any pathogens and the cilia will waft these mucus bound pathogens upwards towards your pharynx where you'll swallow them and then the hydrochloric acid in your stomach will deal with them. The digestive, urinary and reproductive systems are also lined with mucus producing cells. So I think you get the picture that mucus producing cells are going to basically trap the pathogens in slime. Lysozyme is a substance that you would find in your tears and in your saliva. It has antibacterial properties. It usually damages the bacterial cell wall. Hydrochloric acid is produced in the stomach and this hydrochloric acid creates a very acidic, unfriendly environment for many pathogens. Also, lactic acid is secreted by particular bacteria that are found in the vagina and these lactic acid producing bacteria, by producing this acid, create these very unfriendly acidic conditions which pathogens really don't like. So what happens then if these barriers are breached? Well, you have platelets. These are active in clotting and patching up any holes in any blood vessels and this would limit the entry of pathogens. You also have macrophages, those big munchers. You know them, they're white blood cells, monocytes to be specific. Some circulate and others reside in the lymphatic system. Their job is to seek out pathogens and they will destroy them by means of engulfing them and gobbling them up really. And this is a process known as phagocytosis. You should note though that when macrophages engulf and destroy these pathogens, they take their antigen and stick it on their own surface and present that foreign antigen. That's really important for the specific defence system and you'll learn all about that in the next video. There are also proteins that are produced in the fight against pathogens. For example, when cells are infected by particular viruses, these infected cells will produce proteins called interferons. Interferons signal to the not yet infected cells that, hey buddy, I'm infected with a bad virus. These healthy cells will secrete chemicals that interfere with viral replication. So in a way, interferons interfere with viral replication. 
Then there's also inflammation. This is where infected cells secrete this chemical known as histamine. Histamine causes the blood capillaries in the infected area to dilate. This brings in more blood and also more infection fighting white blood cells. The area becomes swollen, hot, red and not to mention very painful. Inflammation is a way of fencing off, if you like, and treating infected areas of tissue. All over inflammation is known as a fever. Finally then, there is this complement system. It's a group of about 30 proteins and when they're activated, they'll eventually result in the lysis or the bursting of the pathogen. The complement system is a significant player in the fight against pathogens. So that was part one of the human defense system. That was the general defense system. So we'll go on to part two next where we deal with the specific defense system. Make sure you use your book. Make sure you learn your definitions. Do pass papers and the best of luck.